It's hard to believe that there are still 20% of SAWS water customers that don't have water right now. It is obviously an emergency situation for a lot of people, and we are pleased to be joined by San Antonio Water System COO Steve Klaus. Steve, thank you for joining us. Right off the top, what do you want people to know about what is happening and, and what some of the barriers are? Uh, well, I would like for people to know the, the best way for us to get the system restored to everyone is for uh, the community to help us. We're pumping as much water now as we do during the peak of the summer months. Normally, this is the least amount of water that we would pump this time of the year, but we're pumping the most. Um, and people are saying, well, if you're pumping all that, where is it going? Well, it's going through all the leaks that exist in private plumbing right now. I think everybody on this on this show knows somebody that had a leak or knows five people that had a leak. And all those leaks are allowing that water to bleed out in, in the lower areas where we serve, in the lower service area. In your neighborhood, the lower homes are getting water, but the upper homes are not. So as we try to push that water out, it's bleeding out at all those lower leak points and the people in the higher areas don't have water until we get out there and we stop those leaks, we valve those homes off at the curb, uh, the people that live in the higher parts of each one of those neighborhoods are gonna continue to be without water. So the community can really help us get service to everyone now um, by, by identifying those leaks, uh, turning those leaks off, and make sure that they get reported so that we can get taken care of one way or another. I mean, we're really talking just it's elevation that's coming into this whole thing as well. That's the first time I've heard that. So that's why a lot of the northern part of the community is still without water right now. Um, that's true, but we have a lot of areas where we're saying, well, SAWS is now serving water. We're pumping water in this community, but we always get calls back from people to say, hey, my house is still out of water. Well, that's what's going on. They live in a higher part of a neighborhood or an area where we're serving, and all the water that we're pumping is being lost in the lower parts. Ah, okay. So we heard from uh, the president and CEO of SAWS earlier in this newscast say that water should be restored to everyone by the Sunday, Monday time frame. So that's a timeline for people. A lot of questions center around what actually happened in the last couple of days to get us to this point. Those leaks certainly a factor, but we also know that saws pumps, some of them were taken off of critical circuits during these power outages. Why did that happen? Right. Well, normally um, saws and CPS coordinate very well on uh, when when there are power outages or, or brownouts for some reason, which we don't normally have, but when there are, they protect our pumping stations. We we work with them to make sure that we can continue to provide water service. But as the situation continued to do, deteriorate, the, the uh, requirement to reduce power in San Antonio, uh, we got more and more requests for that. Um, working with CPS, they, they told us we are going to have to shut off these pump stations and we're going to have to put them on rolling brownouts. Well, when you take a large uh, a computer controlled, fairly complicated pump station offline, um, there is no big button that turns it back on. There's a series of things we have to do. So when we were losing power at our pump stations on a regular basis, it, that we just had no way that we could restart them um, and get pressure back up to people before that power was lost again. That situation just kept compounding for us, like it did all the homeowners across San Antonio. It didn't give us enough time to do what we needed to do to restore service. And so consequently, more and more of our stations uh, were getting taken down like that. We knew the magnitude of the problem, but we understood what CPS was going through. And we've been working since that time to get ready to get our systems restarted once we knew we had that reliable power. But is there no backup for those pumps? No, no backup system in, in case something like this would happen? That's a great question. And, you know, we've looked at that for, for many years. Every single one of our pump stations has a generator, but that generator runs security systems, lights, uh, our computer controls. Whenever we do lose power, we have a power blip. To run our really big pumps, you know, it takes a lot of energy to push water, to lift water out of the ground and to push it out into the community. Um, we're the largest energy consumer in San Antonio. We're CPS's biggest customer. To run a generator that can handle some of our larger pumping stations is uh, essentially the size of a locomotive engine. And the, the reason that we don't put locomotive engines out there to back everything up is because um, CPS provides a great service. 
they it's very rare for us to have a loss of uh, power of this magnitude. If we lost one station, we could provide water from our other stations to that particular area. We're, we're very interconnected. But when we lose all of our stations, it's a completely different picture. And it's something that, uh, you know, in my 35 year career, I've never seen before. Was there an opportunity uh, looking back to give people more of a warning? Because just hours before all this happened, there was warnings going around saying that we could lose our water. The mayor came out and called that a hoax. Then just a few hours later, we end up losing water. I mean, is there a timetable where we could have put out more of a warning than we did? Well, I guess when we were in the part of um, the rotating brownouts now involving uh, pump stations, uh, we could. Uh, I think everyone at that point was optimistic that the power was going to return and stay on. But that's not what we saw. It went on and on and on to the point that we um, that we knew our job was one of recovery. And that's what we focused on, getting everything in place, uh, starting to set up the things we needed to do that when we knew we got that constant power back, we were as far as we could be in that recovery process. So there's a lot of work ahead to do. Still some people, 20% of SAWS customers without that water. But as you mentioned, things that we can all do, those who have that water, conserving where you can, identifying those leaks. Steve Klaus, COO of SAWS, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate uh, all your expertise in the work you're doing. Thank you. We appreciate it too. Take care. We'll be right back.